Okay, we will start the March 28th DRC. Um, and we'll start it at 10 o'clock in the morning. Um, with that, we'll go on with our agenda. Um, first item on the agenda is the Rollies Red Barn uh, expansion on their site plan. And then I believe we have Isaac Rich with their the engineer on this. Can you hear us, Isaac? Yep, I can hear you. Sweet. And it's good to be here. We can hear you too, which is even better. So, <laughs> okay. So, rolling on to this. So, this is a proposed um, expansion of the, the Red Barn located down on the um, frontage road between the frontage road and I-15. So, pretty prominent landmark here in Santa Quinn. Their proposed site plan is and this the striped area is indicating the the area that they're going to increase the building size and then the uh, associated parking around that so um, this is site plan is <laughs> reviewed and approved by the the drc um, and so and this is our first time that we've taken a look at it so with that, um, I'll we'll kind of go around the DRC for any comments or thoughts. Start with just, police chief or fire chief. Let's start with me. Yep. Um, so we we looked at this, and the first recommendation is we need to add a hydrant back towards that loading dock, and then also identify where your um, sprinkling connection is going to be for your riser and FDC. Per code, the fire code, there needs to be a hydrant within 100 feet of that fire department connection for the sprinkling system. Currently we are only showing two hydrants uh, on the west side of the building and with the size of that building and stuff like that we need one more on the back preferably by that loading dock on that northeast corner somewhere in that vicinity. Um, i trying to remember what else we added to that John. Is it just those hydrants? Uh, the hydrants and if I remember correctly I mean oh. we we don't have a dedicated fire riser or FDC for the building. Yeah, they need to bring in wherever your uh, sprinkling system is going to be for the building. You need to bring in a dedicated fire line separate from the hydrant uh, in to supply that with the proposed use and the assembly occupancies, you're going to need a sprinkler this. So to confirm that with you, Dan, are, are you talking about three different uh, water lines coming in then from the main? You've got the fire line for the hydrants, one for the FDC, and then one for the just the culinary normal use water, that two-inch line. Correct. You, yeah. By code, you're not allowed to use the same water line that supplies a hydrant to supply your sprinkling system. Yeah, and, and that, that goes for any size line, right? Like if we were to increase it to like an eight-inch, it doesn't still would apply. Correct. It does not apply. You still have to have a separate dedicated line. <clears throat> Okay. Other than that, I, I don't have any other issues. So, right. And that's also for the FDC as well, then. Uh, the FDC line going in because it's attached. It, the fire line, sorry, I'm, I'm backtracking a little bit here. So, we've got the fire line coming in, but we can't connect the FDC off of that fire line then. That, it has to be separate. Your fire line for your sprinkling system needs to be separate from your hydrant line. So if you're calling that fire line for the hydrants, it has to be a separate water line coming in. Yeah. So so with that, Ryan, a question I would ask is it because they're showing a six inch uh, line coming for this fire hydrant here, a six inch line for this fire hydrant here, but then they're looping that. Would they need to have that water line loop? the connection there to loop there if um to connect those two fire hydrants are, need are both of those hydrants just fed off of one line coming down third west or is there water coming from the south into they're, that system as well they're showing oh, it'll come from both directions as, needs as it looped. needs yeah you can't have dead end hydrants so they, they those two would need to be looped but then they would just need to bring in and typically if you're going to put a, a three inch or a four inch uh riser in then you would just bring a four inch line off of the main in to supply that sprinkling system separate from that six inch line stubbing those hydrants you're talking about the fdc yes okay 
we would probably want to see that as a six inch. I don't know that that you know normally with culinary you do a six or an eight, but that if if you can show so this is norm i'm the city manager if if you can show that the the four inch would work that would be fine but the the concern that i have with with uh the the hydrant that you're needing back there by those loading docks is that a six inch with that length may not be able to give you the fire flow that you need out of that hydrant so it may need to be a, a an eight, eight inch, inch going back to that one by the by the uh, loading dock yeah, and your, your calculations, once you design the sprinkling system, that'll determine your calcs for the fire flow. Um, so the FDC is the fire department connection. Your riser is what you really need that fire line for, if that makes sense. Yep, that yeah, does. Okay. Anything else, Ryan? Nope. Jason, Kyle, with Public Works? Just what we discussed yesterday. I'll just wait for the engineering comments. Okay, come on. Chief first. Yeah, just a uh, suggestion. I see the RV trailer parking there on the north side, but only a 32 width uh, entry and exit where you have 40 down at the bottom. I, I would go wider than 32, otherwise they're gonna tear up your landscaping like that with their trailers when they're pulling them in and out of there. Just a suggestion, I'm sure 32 probably meets code, but um, if, if you want to go look at all the other gas stations that have 32, um, they tear up the corners of the, the landscaping. The sheet is, there we go. Yeah, and if you remember, we, we recently uh, addressed code where 30 is the maximum per code, but they can go as much up to 40 uh, with with an exception. And so I, I think that's a great suggestion. And, and uh, ultimately... They have 40 on the bottom. Mm -hmm. And so... Maybe they want to flip them. I don't know. Yeah, I think I think uh, if they can they can go a little bit wider, I think we'd be supportive of that, and that would be kind of an exception that goes goes along with this approval. So, John, we have the the applicants here. We'd invite you to come oh, up to the yes. table and oh, yes. and uh, join us if you would. Your since your site plan is on there, you, you may be able to help answer questions, that kind of thing. We'd love to have you come up and and uh, if you would state your names for the record, that would be great. So we just barely started and having some conversation with your engineer about fire requirements and hydrants and that kind of stuff. So just want to make sure you're included in the conversation since it's your application. Thanks. So the yeah. comment Rod's making really is a suggestion. Uh, you, you, I think you meet the, the minimum requirements, but but uh, with the trailer parking that you have up there, maybe they will tear your stuff up. Yeah, yeah. push it the wider. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the the inlet from off of the frontage road there, you c we we can go in up to forty feet on that. Right now they're showing thirty two. John, if you'll zoom in there, your your engineer's showing thirty two. We can go up to forty with an exception from this body, and we would recommend that you do that, just to to make sure that you've got that, like Rod saying, just make sure you've got a good turning radius, radius there. Mm -hmm. It's and not then, it's not sorry, it's not a requirement, but we would recommend that you. That you go as big as possible well yeah they have 40 on the bottom i'm just i would flip them at least yeah because anyway the only other thing i had was what's the purpose of the crosswalk i mean what are we trying to do with maybe that's a city question versus a developer question but well and they, they could talk more about this but essentially when they they do their events uh okay. they're, they're hoping to do the the loading of of uh attendees across the street and not on the, the same side as, as, as their business. So if they can load over there, that way their, their tractor with the, the trailers don't have to cross the road every time. Uh, it'll be mostly people parking on, on that side and then walking over to, to you know, jump on those tractors with the, the things. But it, maybe, maybe the rollies want to expound more on that. But that, that's kind of what our understanding is of that intent. Is that trail? Do we are we still going to have some sort of trail corridor go down through there? At some on the master plan, we do show a trail on the the west side of, of that road, and I just that, worry about encouraging people to park on that side of the street. That shoulder's fairly steep, and they won't pull completely off the road. They'll leave two tires on the pavement. That's right. usually what they do. Well, that, be, that's my only. To worry. be clear, they're not looking to have everybody park on the west side of the road. Well, but are we encouraging them to park on the west side of the road and walk across? The no, street? I think it, I think it's when they have the events. Everybody's parking on the east side of the road, and then they would walk across to to load onto the tractor and, and that. So, I mean, the crosswalk would be, you know, 
a good good connection point, but really it's not going to be heavily used unless unless there's events. Is that, well, is that... we, we just want, like right now, Rod, we do an apple picking event. Sure. And so mm -hmm. people park at the Red Barn and then walk across the street to pick apples. And we just want to make it as safe as possible for the people parking on the east to access the orchard on the west to pick apples. And so that was kind of the thought there. But it's not, it's not meant to reverse traffic and have them park on the west to cross to go. That would be my only worry is if we can somehow encourage them to park in their parking lot and then walk across. So I don't, we don't pinch traffic right. going through there. That was my only. Concern. And you could do that with signage, right? You guys put up signs to say, you know, parking this way. You could certainly do that, encourage them to continue to park on the east and south of the new facility. That would be, that would be the intent. And I think as long as we've got some good signs there, we can, you can probably help control that pretty good. I mean, like, as you know, Rod, th this is something that really is our right away, and we need to worry about, and it's it's public safety and that sort of thing. We appreciate the role he's thinking about this, and kind of the the flow of, of when they have events and they have U picks and things like that. So, yeah, I didn't know if it was a requirement from us or mm, just a suggestion. No, it's it's as they they've sat down with us, we've we've acknowledged that they have events there, and, and people you know on, sure, bo on both sides of the street, and, and how that how's that flow? I mean, we looked at different opportunities of how to make that that work but some of those those uh uh options would be extremely pricey but maybe at some point in the future something needs to be done more with that to to make that crossing safe uh i mean this is this is a huge investment they're making in in the red barn and and everything that's there could generate a little bit more traffic uh, i think this is this is kind of the the the, the easy you know uh solution at least uh for now for the for pedestrians going uh, across the street back and forth but but maybe at some point in the future something more needs to be done yeah, one thing I'd recommend is installing the proper warning signs before the crosswalk mm -hmm. on both sides of it just so that you know we can make sure that the traffic knows that there's a crosswalk coming and so the MUTCD the federal regulations basically state that you go back i don't remember four or five hundred feet and say crosswalk coming up and that kind of stuff that's what jason's yeah. talking about much, much like you see in a school zone although we don't anticipate this to be a school zone just having those warning signs in advance i think is good for for folks and will help with the public safety yeah fairly inexpensive way to yeah way to do it yeah I think they actually have a warning sign listed on the plan. I don't know if it's on this page or not, but I think they had one listed. So yeah. for your engineer, if you'll just make sure that they have the, the proper warning signs for that crosswalk, that would be beneficial on the on the plan so we can show where those are at. We can check that. Got it. I wrote that note down. Um, and I'll get those added to the plans as well. I, I did kind of leave, and I don't know if you took a look at the, uh, the keynote there for those signs that are there. I... I I re reference it back to the uh, Santa Quin City standards, um, you know, and, th and that's more that drawing standard 10 is for stop signs, so that's more height and things that way. But I, I kind of left it that way with the intent of trying to coordinate with you guys a little bit as yeah. to what you would like those signs to be and kind of give you that freedom to to say, you know, yeah. how you want those to, to be. So. Yeah, we would we would want those to be city type signs. We're not looking for U dot type, you know, or again, we're not looking for school zone signs. Just a normal, you know, visible sign that has high vis, you know, reflectivity and all that kind of stuff on it. That that's all we're looking for. But just delineating those out on the plan so that we have the proper distance and the warnings and that kind of stuff would be good. Yeah, okay. you got it. Anything else to you first? No, I didn't have anything else. Okay. Jason? Yeah, I mean, there's red line comments that uh, planning and zoning related that we can look at here in a bit, but there's three things I want to bring up while, while uh, uh, to maybe emphasize a little bit more. Uh, one of them uh, is is uh, during this process and, and can happen concurrently with, with the site plan review, we'll have to do architectural review. I am not worried about the architectural review. This, I mean, the red barn, and, and I know you're, you're going to be looking very agricultural, so it's more of a formality to, to, to have the ARC review that. So when you have renderings, vertical renderings, just let me know and we'll, we'll get that scheduled and, and get that taken care of. But uh, like I say, it's, it's more just because our code requires ARC review, but I'm, I'm uh, 
I'm looking forward to to seeing what what you come up with, um, and and I'm not concerned that that it's it's not going to look agricultural. Um, the other the other couple things uh, we need a little bit more detail about what's in the building. Uh, it, it was hard to determine uh, parking uh, based on the uses that are inside. I mean, I know a lot of it's going to be commercial, but there may be parts of it that would have a little bit different parking requirement. Uh, and really, I think it'd be advantageous to you because it might be less parking requirement based on on what the uses are inside. If the, if there's some of it there that you know uh, warrants less parking because it's it's not really for the public and it's it's just for employees, and that'll help us calculate the what the parking need is need is a little bit better. And then finally, the last thing is um, our code would require that you have frontage improvements, curb gutter, sidewalk, uh, those types of things. However, as we've looked at this together and we've discussed it, there's actually some things that we like about how you've you've shown that frontage. Uh, uh, you've got kind of a, almost an agricultural swell it looks like with some landscaping there. Um, you know, looking at the the sidewalk connectivity in that area, it makes sense the way that you have it now. But because our code requires that, something more is going to need to be done in order to to make this work. Uh, could be in the form of like a an agreement. Uh, which, which again, is something we need to work on on the side to, uh, that would, would need to, to be concurrently approved with this. So um, that's something that we're exploring of, of what the best way is to address that. But we, we do like what you have there. It's just, you know, our responsibility still is to make sure that we're, we're following code. And sometimes that means either a code amendment or, or some sort of an agreement. And so we're, we'll look further into that and figure out the best way to do that. But uh, I'm sure engineering will talk. Uh, further the reasons why uh, the, the 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 frontage the way that you've improved that uh, why that's that's good for for a, a number of different reasons and and so and I think it, it kind of you know adds to the agricultural look and feel and that sort of a thing so those were the three main things I wanted to bring up but obviously I may chime in as, as we look a little bit closer at some red lines so to go along with that just know that that any approval of that would be the ultimate approval of that would be the city council and that's something that we're willing to take forward and start having those discussions now that we have a, a site plan from you and we know where we're going and it's kind of out there we can start having those discussions i know you've been with your engineer you've been working on a lot of things and we've had some some uh, meetings with you to just talk about options we, we love what we're seeing it looks great it just again it doesn't meet our code there's nothing here that we're saying there's a no it's just a we got to figure out how we can get there and we're certainly willing to to go through the process to help you with that as we as we can get this going for you so that i would just add that to what jason's indicated and then john's got some re, uh, other red lines that we have there yep so real quick if i can jump in on that jason um so when you're, we're talking about some kind of an agreement or doing something concurrently with all of this is this something that we're looking to have you want to work with me specifically on with that agreement, I, I would think it'd probably be more the uh, the rollies that you'd want to be meeting kind of offline on that to try and come together on those terms that way. Yeah, that, um, th that's correct. I'd expect we'd work closer with the rollies. Obviously, they, they may have you uh, a part of it or or whatever. But but yeah, this would this this would be uh, more of an agreement with the property owner, not necessarily engineering. I don't see needing to be too yeah. involved with that, but. We, we, we have some other agreements that we've done that I think we could use as a template to, to start fleshing out how, how this would work. Um, and so we, we could we could uh, send that over to, to uh, Todd and Jace or, or uh, um, yeah, and, and kind of just work through that and figure out the best way to do that. But like I say, this, this, is, this is the first time we've looked at plans. We've kind of talked about it before, but now that we're getting a, a little bit more of a comprehensive picture with these plans, I think that'll help us not only address this, but maybe any other things that that uh, the city can do to to help facilitate uh, this this uh, expansion that that they're doing. Okay, and, and then going back to the art, uh, the ARC comment um, on that, is it something that you want submitted with this next round? You know, once all of these red lines are addressed and, and things like that, you want it as a part of the site plan review, or are you thinking more? along once we start going for building permit you know what where in the stage do you want uh, these renderings of just of these exterior drawings is it you know 
I'm, I'm assuming it's a part of the site plan review here that you're, you're looking, talking about it, right? Yeah, fr frankly, the sooner the better. Uh, definitely not to, okay. to building because uh, that's that's going to be, you know, probably holding it up you a little bit. But if, if you can get us yep. some elevations with some some percentages of materials used and, and, and uh, measurements and things like that on it, that'll give us a, a good sense of, of if, if we have all the information we need to, to make sure it meets uh, architectural code. So... Uh, yeah, the sooner the better. It doesn't necessarily have to be turned in with the site plan. It can be turned in separately, but we we want to to get that taken care of sooner than later, so that it's it's not any you know something that's holding uh, the progress of, of this review and the progress of, of what the rollies you know the construction that they want to start. Um, so get that to us as soon as possible, and you can even you know either submit that through uh, Citizen Serve like you did the site plan or. Uh, you know, our, our staff person, Camille Moffitt, is, is the person that really looks, takes the first preliminary look at that, and then we, we get that ready, and, and we'll, uh, we'll hold those meetings on an as-needed basis. So if you can get those plans turned in, we can, we can uh, kind of go back and forth, and once we get it to a point, we can set a meeting up whenever we need to to, to get it taken care of. Yeah, you got it. And then uh, the, the only other thing I'd comment on parking is... Um, I'll, I'll go through and, and clarify that a little bit more. You know, there, there's a lot going on inside that building right. that, uh, uh, you know, you got retail aspects, commercial aspects, warehouse type aspects, right. things like that. But, yep. but in the end, you know, the, the main concern and, and the role is to speak uh, on this account as well is even if we come in under that, that uh, like significantly under that minimum parking requirement, Mm -hmm. the, the goal is still to maximize parking out there just right. because of the events that are handled out there, right? So Great. Yep. And it, it may not be a concern at all. It's just for, for us to verify. And, and really, if you can provide not just the different uses that are in there, but like the, the square footage of the different types of uses, a lot of the parking requirements are based on square footage. And so, like I say, that a, a lot of it's just verifying. I mean, we see a, a big kind of commercial building that we know that, that it's not all going to fit under one category. Like you say, some of it will be warehousing and things like that. So, uh, yeah, if, if, if you know what that is, uh, that would be very helpful in, in us verifying uh, parking. Okay. You got it. Okay. So we'll go through... I'll just kind of go page by page through these these comments. Some of them we've already covered. Um, if that's the case, we'll just uh, kind of briefly touch on and then move on. But um, basically, on the the flat sheet that we have on front, um, it appears that we're going to do a lot kind of consolidation and lot line adjustment associated with this, which isn't necessarily a concern. Um, so long as there's not an additional parcel created. I believe there's three parcels here currently. Um, but as long as we're maintaining, we still just have these these two, um, that shouldn't be an issue. The only thing that we would just say is, again, is this review is part of it. Um, we'll address any of these comments, and then um, that can be taken care of with the, the county on there. So. Sure. Um, kind of going through, I think... So we've already talked about ARC. Um, the other comment on here with the part of the utilities, um, when it comes to servicing the outdoor irrigation, assuming that you guys are gonna accommodate that through, um, through your irrigation water shares, not associated with that. And so there will be, because of the an increase in water use that's anticipated with this there will be a water dedication amount that will be need to be taken care of on this for um, for indoor use for the indoor outdoor use, use we just want you to state on the plans that that you plan to take care of the outdoor use with your irrigation water in that way because there's no pressure irrigation line out in front there's no service connection which is a typical you know because of that we just want you to state that you're going to take care of that with your with your farm irrigation and then we're good to go on that there isn't going to be any water dedication for that or, also, or need to bring a half a mile of pipeline down or something like that. We already know you guys got water to take care of things there. So Yep, because the closest water we have is further north for our pressurized irrigation system is further north up at the intersection of just south and mm -hmm. uh, second west. So that'll save a considerable uh, amount of off-site on that. 
Okay. Will you guys do the calculations and things like that for yes. allocating how much water needs to be dedicated? We will. We're going to need your fixture count on it, and that's part of, part of the reason why we need your floor plan and everything so we know what's what the use is going to be it's really going to be an iterative process where you're going to have to provide us with information and then we're, we'll calculate it from there yeah yeah kind of zoom in on the uh the dumpster um again city code requires that there's a five foot planner around the the exterior on three sides of of the dumpster enclosure so that'll need to be adjusted through here um, and again, once we get that additional width between the parking curb and gutter and the, the uh, trash enclosure. Um, one, one item that is a recommendation, it's not necessarily a requirement by, for city code, <coughs> excuse me, um, it may be beneficial to, because you have an 18 foot drive aisle, which is Parking, uh, parking not stall, drive Thank you. Par parking. Uh, parking stall depth. Um, it may be uh, better to have a, a wider sidewalk is because as cars come and they pull into there, the front bumper could hang over that and kind of restrict pedestrian flow. As I mentioned before, the parking stall depth is meets city code. The, par the sidewalk width meets city code, but I say it's a recommendation whether or not it can fit on the side or not. Um, I don't know, but that's it's more of a one of those uh, recommendations because he could potentially cause a little pinch point there at that corner of the building. Well, I'll talk with the rollies on that offline and, and kind of and as well as the architect and try and see what uh, what makes sense there. You know, if we by widening that we start to have the building almost seem like it's jutting into the the uh sidewalk that way and and you know it's just figuring stuff out yep. with, with uh the no overall layout there so yep, I understand does the actual building go to that corner or is that just like a this post is, for the overhang of the front porch the, it, this is the existing building the front porch is right here oh yep. okay okay so a little bit constrained it is um and then <clears throat> again um just for some additional information, the the courtyard was anticipated use, whether it's, um, again, it can come to, to seating, amount of seating for its, you know, outdoor seating for the restaurant or, or whatever use is provided in there. Uh, just a little bit more details on that so that um, it can, uh, all the parking calculations, everything can be done appropriately. Yeah. Um, utility sheet so for the the sewer we will need an anticipated sewer loading uh potential flows so you know the makeup of uh the effluent that would be coming from the expansion um and then anticipated flows uh we use those one so that our treatment plant we we can understand what the what's going to be coming into it you do show a uh uh treatment you know, a grease trap. Manhole, a grease trap here that helps um but then just so that we're we're aware of what's coming coming down into the system um and then we've already talked about the water dedication um with this line here the sewer as it extends out of the frontage road down 780 and to the existing manhole uh we will need an easement for that sewer line to be there, similar to, to the one that's existing as it heads heads north out of there. Just so that in the event that something would happen to that sewer line, we can get in and, and maintain it. And then as, as Jason brought up a little bit earlier, um, curb and gutter uh, and sidewalk is, is a development requirement at this point. Anytime development comes in, um, the site plan is one of those items that would kick in that requirement. Um, but then as, as Jason mentioned before, that it would probably be a, a beneficial um, element to look at our code to make sure that we can adjust that appropriately. Because right now, even deferral agreements are limited to within what we call the core area of town, which would be essentially from four south 
fourth north, third west, and fourth east. And we're, we're not looking to just defer this. We're looking at maybe waiving that requirement. So a deferral agreement doesn't really make sense. Maybe some other type of an agreement. But maybe you want to speak more to why we see this as advantageous for, for anybody who's wondering why we're looking at a potential waiver for well, storm drainage. And that. One of the items is come to the grading plan. Um, this this system here where you're basically using the existing topography and do a little additional grading to where this whole area in front of the development for in front of the site plan is essentially helps with storm drainage um, catches everything from the south and uses the the whole roadway there um, and then it actually connects over to the uh, proposed basin on the north it, it's an excellent method in which you can control and take care of stormwater. So it's a low impact development type um, method. And um, so in that regard, it's a, it's a excellent proposed system, which we can do that. So. Get back up to where I was at. Um, going along with that, uh, that you know, waived uh, agreement, just so that you guys are aware for future development potentially, um, I, I have gone through the design process of the widening of the road, essentially, um, just preliminary with grades, so that our back of curb and sidewalks and and you know that crosswalk and things like that. If you guys ever were to come through uh, in the future and widen that road. Um, it's designed such so that it, it communi it, it basically communicates to what you would widen that road grade wise with and so that you were not running into some weird wonky grades and and hard design issues later on when you guys if you guys decide to do something there so that's just FYI there so what you're saying is you're preserving the right of way so that should we need to widen that at some point in the future we can do that yeah. It's yeah, exactly, okay. and it still communicates and works with the site and the grades that we have there now. Great, sounds good. Thank you for uh, helping us to understand that. Well, and and to be clear, an agreement may be the way to do it, but I'm 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 trying to figure out other other ways to address that, and maybe a code amendment. And I I, I think there might be some ideas, but that's that's something we're going to need to figure out. We'll we'll take that through the appropriate process. Like Norm said, if it's an agreement, it'll need to be. Uh, worked out with the the city council if it's an amendment then it would go through a, a legislative process but i i think uh yeah I, I i keep going back and forth on that so just just to, to clarify it's it's not necessarily going to be an agreement but that that may be the the way that we need to do to address this okay. um the next item is uh this proposed the southern proposed access to to the site um as you can see, I believe this is indicating right here is the property line um, of the adjacent property over to the to the west. To, to, to kind of is that is that accurate that. that that's what that's yeah. portraying? Yes, that is. You you are correct. Okay. Just some some background information is currently the right of way dedication for 300 West is a heads further south. There's a portion of that that actually has not been dedicated as official right-of-way um it's an it's that road's been there for it's a 60 70 years i don't know how long it's been it's been there for a long time and so that it's would be a prescriptive easement across there it's an access that it's a public access everyone can go through there however there is um some potential uh for that property as it comes through here that's outside of the right of way that that may need to have some discussion with them or worked out with the county. Say okay, you know, to get that background all in place and say yeah, this is the actual right of way that's associated with this this roadway, so that that access isn't coming off of someone else's private property. So hey, John, can I ask a question for the engineer on this? Where where does this What's shown on these plans? Where does that sit compared to the current access that's to the the, the south access to the Rollies property? They're just south of the asphalt that goes to the parking lot, 
what is it possible for you to show where the existing one is versus where the new one is so we can get a better understanding of that yeah, I can do that. I can overlay that. So, so just so that you kind of, I mean, typically what I'll do is show on the demo plan where that's at. And then once we start getting into the site plan improvements, I'll start to kind of freeze those out and, and not show those there. But for this reason and, and this uh, discussion, I can show that there. Um, if, if you'd like me to that way and, and maybe it's just in some lighter you know because as you're seeing here it's it's the whole thing is almost like a, a giant approach going into the, right. the parking lot there so maybe it's just showing where the edge of asphalt is or something like that that kind of coordinates there with you well what we're trying to get at john if you go to the other sheet that you were just showing what we're trying to get at is is where is the prescriptive right of way that's the that's what we're really looking at is trying to figure out where does that new approach lie compared to the existing approach that you have that they have that that's what we really want to see on this on this particular sheet okay and, and i can kind of show that and, and illustrate that a little bit more i'm i'm open i'm looking through my my cat files right now to yeah just just update it on the plans that'd be yeah. great and it, and, it, yeah. and if there's something there we just want documentation to to clearly show that it's a, a right of way and, and, and that way we can avoid any dispute with, with uh, property owner. the property owner that shows that that, that uh, owns that area, even though we all know it's a public uh, access. Okay. Well, so, so just preliminarily there for you, as, as we're talking here, I've, I, you know, I've got my CAD file open. Uh, that new approach is actually about 120 feet from where the existing, like, so that the face of curve on that that north side of the approach down there is about 150 feet from where the actual existing approach is now. So we're we're lengthening that significantly uh, to the south. That the whole parking area there and and approach. So right about here, I'm just eyeballing it off the existing building. Roughly right about here is where the existing was. Is is that maybe even a little further north? Probably right around where the cross right crosswalk is. is. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess you were about right where you were at. Yeah. Okay. And that's that's show. That's where the existing access currently is. Okay. But I can show that on there so that you're aware of that. But my the the reason I had done what I had done is you know I didn't know that it hadn't been uh, that that right of way didn't exist there, uh, but, you know with the road being there and things like that. So um, I just assumed it's in the right of way and we were okay to do what we were doing there. So um, I can work with the rollies on that and see what kind of relationship they got with the guys to the the uh, southwest of them there. And if it's possible to get an easement, if not, then we can kind of rework some things and and move that so that it's kind of out of that that property there so we we there, there's a there, there is a, a parcel there that is the, the right of way and then there's a, a a portion of the rollies property that has a call that's south 25 29 49 west 135 67 if we're if we're within that that diagonal mm -hmm. right there i don't really see that being a big issue but if we're farther south than that then we, we could potentially have some some concern with that so that that's where I would go with that is just if we can if we can have that access within the the call that's there the 135 62 feet that would be that would be the best for that so that we don't have any potential conflict with private property to the south yeah okay um, we've already covered those two comments are what Chief Lynn spoke about earlier. These are the plan profiles for the the proposed sewers that's coming down through. Everything through there makes. Um, so John, can I ask a question on that? On that sewer that's proposed, it, it looks like that they're just trying to parallel the asphalt or just be off of the asphalt. Is that correct? That is correct. And so the right of way that you talked about or the easement that we would need is just going down that private lane that's there I think it would parallel the water line that we did a few years ago to that subdivision it would just be an expansion or an addition to that or a new easement for that that would be fine yes but but on the other side we are staying all on the asphalt we're not we just have one cut coming across the road 
for the for the sewer line where we cross the road. That's correct. Okay. Um, as a note, the any retaining wall um, that's over four feet in height does require a separate building permit um, as, as part of that. With a, with a that stamp from a structural engineer. Correct. Now there's a way that you can mitigate that. You can just go four feet and then step it back four feet and do another four feet. If it's tiered and separated and it's not one big giant wall like that, you don't have to have it engineered, but you can, you, you can work with your engineer and try and figure out what's best for that. We're, we're pushing our, our limits on that side to try and get that connectability over there is really what it is. Sure. We, I, I prefer to try and do it tiered just to try and keep that extra step out of the way there. Right. Um, but in this case, right along UDOT there, we just don't have the room to be able to do it. So we do have a, a pretty big, large wall that's going in right there. I understand. Um, the, uh, the design has been done on this and the, the plans are in or those details are actually in the detail section of these, these sheets here. Um, but we can, is it just going through the system and trying to do a, uh, a separate application and everything that way for it, those? It is a separate building permit application yes. for a retaining yeah. wall over, over four feet. And, and is it uh, retaining, is it that, is that what the name of it is, is retaining wall application kind of a thing or review? It, it's just a building permit for a retaining wall. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's not part of the site plan review, so it won't hold up. The site plan review we're going through it'd just be like when you move forward for a building permit for the building you would need a separate building permit for that wall right uh that that dives into the structural components of it so it doesn't fall over on someone it's not needed today but it will hold up your building permit on the building if you we would just have them encourage you to have them ready and submitted both at the same time and with separate permits that would be the best way to do it right so okay, so they are ready and good to go. I'll I'll relay this on to the architect when they go for building review then and make sure that they're aware of that. Hey. A couple of items on the, the storm drain sheet. Um, right now we've we our city code requires that um, that basically the twenty five year storm event is retained on site and the hundred year storm event is controlled. So um, that basically has been interpreted to mean that basically that hundred year event stays on on site. You can use the exist you can use the pipes um, as part of the volume, curb inlets, uh, the parking if there's any area in the parking lot that it could pond in, all of those items could be included in, in controlling that hundred year event volume. But that 100 year event volume needs to stay on site so so a, a conversation that we had had at one point uh with the rollies and i'd have to revisit this with them but is it possible to put a, a storm drain pipe underneath the road there from the retention pond or something like that 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 drains that 100 year design storm into their orchard to the west to the west across so that would essentially be a private storm drain line that would cross the road and we don't allow um, a private storm drain line to go across the city right of way. And so that also ends up being offsite. Just a question for you. Have you figured in percolation and, and, and that kind of thing to try and get your volumes? Yeah, I didn't incorporate all of that. In the, uh, we, we allow that. We allow an outflow through percolation. So if you've got some, you know, you'd have to do a perk test on that, on that location, but you, you can use that as an outflow. So that will help you with your calcs. That will help you with your storage. Yeah, and you can, yep, use, okay. you can use that on both both retention pond yeah. sites for both of those. Okay. Um, additionally, there's um, just to prevent washing out or anything for the from the swells that comes through here um, on the northern end as it enters in that northern retention pond. Um, just uh, some riprap or uh, somewhat designated um, area for that water to flow as it goes into that retention area. Yeah. Also, one question, I think it's on a separate sheet, but are, is it anticipated that this inlet, you've got a line that calls out for daylight pipe here, um, 
Is that? Yeah. Sorry, there's not a pipe there. Okay. There, there's supposed to be a pipe right right there that uh, is not showing up. Okay. So just want to to clarify on that one. One thing that we do is some sort of pre treatment of the flows. This is mostly a private system, um, but to help the long term maintenance of that system, that there's. Um, pre-treatment that's in, involved in there. And that includes things like snouts, uh, a sump, a three foot sump in the bottom of your curb inlets to catch any uh, sediment, trash, silts or anything that may make their way into it and keep that out of the actual pipe that's within underneath the parking lot to save, to save that issue. And it also keeps it out of your retention basin, which could fill up with that, with that sediment. Yeah. And again, none of uh, those uh, additional details for these curb inlets um, aren't aren't shown on there. So let's assume that there aren't any sumps included. Right. Right. No, I hadn't included any of that. So. Okay. And again, that can also go to help with your volume on the hundred year event. Yeah. Nothing on that sheet. Um, just to note that the, ma the masonry finish on the trash enclosure would need to have mason need to be sim material similar to the, the main building. Uh, so in color um, uh, type things would just have to match there. Yeah. And I believe and then these are landscaping comments. most of these um, just uh, making sure that appropriate width and lengths are are taken care on those I'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail on each of these there, there's a few trees there that are making our police chief twitch a little bit so <laughs> <laughs> we just want to make sure that we maintain good visibility for and, and safety for pedestrians so that's that's in traffic coming in and out. Yeah, for so sure. So it's 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 typical that that uh, we appreciate the, the the effort that's gone into to beautifying it. But some of those trees next to the ingress and egress, usually we err on the side of caution of making sure they're they're not going to impede visibility for traffic going in and out. So that yeah, that's an easy change. Yep. So that's all the comments here. That we're covered is there any any others that i may have missed or any thoughts we talked about loading on the on the sewer and that would be just you know we'd need to know what the ph is and what the what the anticipated bod is going to be coming out of the we facility for that. oh awesome that'd be great thank you Sweet. do you want us to test that we could send it in or do you want to test it you already have yeah. Yeah, okay already awesome have awesome that's great is that what you're wanting from us as PH and TODs? Uh, we just took a water sample from the cider mill, current cider mill, had it tested. Oh, okay. okay. So it sounds like the, the rollies are taking care of that. That's not something we need from you as the engineer. Okay, okay. Anything else? If not, I would look for a motion on this. So, John, there's still some things that we need to get worked out on the engineering side of things and some questions and some update on the plan. I would, I would uh, motion that we table this and have the red lines addressed and then bring it back and we can get things moving and that give us the time that we need to also figure out what direction we're taking with any kind of agreement for, for I don't want to call it variance, we don't allow variances, but an exception to like the frontage and the curb and gutter and that type of thing. So we, we can work on that in the meantime. So that's my motion is to table. Got a motion to the table. Is there a second? I'll second it. Second by Jason. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, we'll go to vote. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, the application has been tabled. Um, we'll get these sent over to um, the applicants and um, we will begin working on those and begin the discussions so yeah like i say don't hesitate to get us elevations for architectural review we can get that taken care of and like i say i'll, I'll be working on the side to to work on the the frontage improvements but um i already looked through code and i think i've I found 
uh, some things that, that can help us navigate that. Yeah, good. I'll, uh, I'll reach out to the uh, architect and have those ready to go on this next submittal. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Okay. We don't have anyone else joining us via Zoom, if I remember correctly. So I'm going to stop, stop the Zoom share and not worry about dropping that. Okay, the next item on the agenda is the uh, Silver Oaks preliminary plan. So, we've got the applicants here if you want to join us. Seems like the temperature is rising in here. Okay, so this is the second review um, that the DRC has had on the proposed Silver Oak subdivision. Uh, subdivision is located uh, adjacent to Main Street and south of Lark Lane and 200 North. Um, it's the old Erkenbrack Orchard property over there. Um, Erkenbrack's existing building is in this location. Um, and this is a proposed 166 unit development, I believe I got that right. Um, 165, sorry, that's one over. So 165 uh, multifamily development through here with some elements of, of commercial um, included in there. So um, again, this is the second review of it. DRC's um, action that would be taken today or could be taken today is um, a recommendation to the Planning Commission um, on this or um, or tables as it's as it's needed. So with that, we'll go around the, the DRC, right? So again, fire hydrants. Um, John, if you want to zoom in on that flex space down at the south, current fire code requires a hydrant within 100 feet of any fire department connection for sprinkling system of those flex spaces. So when I talked with you earlier, you anticipated sprinkling those. The other thing is, is right now you currently show those hydrants on the north side of the parking structure. Well, if we need to tap into them, we're laying hose and wrapping all the way around and in. So if you can just bring two hydrants in, uh, in between like 17 and 18, 8 and 9, that would put one in. So if we have to pull into that area, there's a hydrant close and we're not shutting the whole road down. Um, whatever you're calling that one road out there. But that also brings those within the distance for the sprinkling connections. And then just make sure you have that on both the south ones and then the, the units over there to the east as well. But other than that, I didn't have any comments. Okay, yep, we'll do that. Thank you. Thank you. Jason? Yeah, on the irrigation line, the existing one that goes through the property, you call it out as a 10 inch. It's actually like a 21 inch it's it's a pit pipe. It's really off size. So okay. yeah. you're going to have to get with the irrigation company and figure out what size they need and to get back through there. And, and it'll have to meet our standard if it goes through the road, too. So. Yep. And then also uh, the water meters. Did did I see? Did you call them out? The sizes. Yeah, they're going to do well. I don't call them they're out. not called out on the the plans that I was able to see. I, I think that's something we want to show is what size water meters. Yeah, we got a label on there. I thought we had it, but we got to add it. Or they'd be a two inch. Or are you anticipating a two inch? No, they want to do what was it? I think it was inch and a half to four units. Yeah. So each each four units would have a, an inch and a half meter. Okay. Yeah. That that seems really odd to me. Can we go two inch and pick up five or six units instead of because that like with twenty and twenty through twenty six, you're going to end up having two meters there for mm -hmm. for that third, and even the same thing on twenty seven through thirty one, you're going to have two meters, one meter for one extra unit. If you, if you went two inch, you could likely cover two inch even up to six or seven units, I would imagine. You'd have to do the calcs on that. But just the more service connections we have, the more meters you have, those types of things, we, we would recommend that you look at doing maybe two inch on those instead of one inch to be able to service more units. Okay. That's, that's going to eliminate, it's going to increase the cost from an inch and a half to two inch, but probably not a lot, but it's going to eliminate meters. You're, you're going to have fewer meters if you go that way. 
Okay. That, that inch and a half just seems, it's kind of an odd size. I mean, I know they do it, but we, we typically would want to see a two inch and that way you should be able to cover probably six units or more with a with one meter. Yeah, I'd anticipate you'd see some savings by right. know, being able to serve more units and right. okay. having less infrastructure. Right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that's all I have, John. Okay. You first. Yeah, we're still missing stop signs at Main Main Street and 200 North. Um, and then still we're missing one at uh, Street 5 and Street 1, that intersection. I didn't see one there. Um and then I think that's all. Are we going to talk about trees later on? <laughs> so they, they, they've, they've given us a landscaping plan. Uh, it's a lot of trees. Part, part of uh, architectural, sometimes landscaping's looked at closer. Generally, landscaping's not looked at really thoroughly until final. Uh, this is a preliminary plan. I mean, we could, but uh, this, this is going to come back to us before they're going to break ground and, and start building it. So we're, we're just in the preliminary stage of this. Uh, I think the, the landscaping was more uh, wanting to get it just to make sure that open spaces and architectural related type things were were uh, were addressed. So, is there some kind of site triangle? Anything? I mean, just so we give a trial landscaper to a board. Yeah, it's in our standard. Things. We have site triangles uh, in our uh, standard. You can pull we'll up have, on it. We'll our, have our landscape guys yeah. look at that. And make yeah. sure. That yeah. And I think I think you probably met the site triangles as submitted I, yeah, on I guess this one. Is there one. anything additional that you want that but we can just incorporate now? That's a lot of trees, and as they mature. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're going to grow out, and it may right. cause some issues in those triangles. So, I don't. We can talk about it yeah, later. We're fine to mm -hmm. adjust. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's all I have. Okay. okay. Jason. Yeah. Just as, as a note, they um, the applicant did go through architectural review. They did get conditional approval for that. For for I should say for all the residential buildings. Uh, nothing for the commercial yet. Um, or or warehouse, but uh, just. You know, a couple of things to note. Uh, you've indicated on the plans that shared parking is something that, that you'd want to have approved. Uh, I don't, to my knowledge, we haven't received any shared parking agreement from no, you yet. We got that one. You have we 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 have a draft. We're okay. just about ready to submit. Just okay. to make sure. Yeah, I think we could probably recommend this forward, but yeah. preliminary couldn't get approved unless that was right. was done. Yeah. Um, and that way, we we know exactly how that shared parking work. And really, it's it's the planning commission, I believe, that that approves shared parking. So. Uh, they would need to know kind of the more the details and the terms of, of how that shared parking would, would work. Yeah, hopefully we'll get that to you this week to Kay. get your review. And yeah, yeah. I think it's safe to say that if, if this did get, uh, you know, a recommendation to move forward, there'd be some conditions that would need to be met before it yeah. can even be put on a planning commission agenda. So, but we'll see. Uh, from a planning and zoning standpoint, uh, that that was the kind of the one thing I wanted to talk about. There might be some red lines and, and, and things like that, but in terms of, of uh, you know, items of substance to discuss. I think that's probably it for me. Don't you have anything? Like yeah, that? I'm wondering why we don't have street names and addresses and stuff yet. I know that we don't do that until final, but Street 5 and Street 3 and Street 6, we really need to start having some yeah. names on these streets. Okay. We, we got a comment on there. Randy would like to start working on addressing, and so it's really kind of help us help you. Uh, mm -hmm. You can get through final a little bit sooner if, if Randy can start assigning all the, the addresses because there's quite a few units in there. So, and do, you, and do you want street names or coordinates, or how do you guys? Both. You'll need to. Okay. The, yeah. the problem with it is, is you've got. <laughs> you've got. You don't have north, south, east, west streets, and yeah. so you're going to have a little bit of a challenge there. But okay. but we would anticipate some of them would have. Most of them would probably have names, and there might oh, be yeah. some. Say the street, these streets. Um, I mean, you've you've got a lot of streets between Second North and well, even First, First North. North and Second North, which actually runs through here, and then this is Lark Lane. So, yeah. please, please be creative with your names. Uh, you might even take a quick Google search yeah. just to see if there's already an existing yeah, name. I yeah. know this was an orchard, but please do not use yeah. fruit names <laughs> for your street names. <laughs> Yeah. We'll, uh, it's we'll, kind of, we'll mark something and send it to you just to make sure we're on the okay, on yep. right track with that. Yep. Okay. Anything else, Norm? No. We're happy to go with any street names the city, <laughs> the city, <laughs> city like. So we'll hopefully give give some good suggestions and get some feedback from okay. you. Um, and that, again, that's a note. We've already discussed that one there. So, um, again, here's some notes on the. Um, 
didn't say we kind of adjusted that but the parking at the end caps of the parking making sure those are appropriate width there that's what those um, two items are talking about there um, we do need again similar comment that we've talked about others is the landscaping requirements and spacing requirement around trash enclosures making sure we're meeting those we're referencing the provided the code there for you um, and on this again number of parking stalls works um, <clears throat> but there is that cross agreement stalls is kind of what we talked about there just to make sure we're delineating which ones are anticipated to be for that that shared and how, parking. for your calculation how many extra do we, are we needing uh, how many extra do you have and or how many there every so there's enough parking stalls for the development oh, okay. um, it's just a matter of indicating which ones are going to be included in that shared okay. access agreement or shared parking agreement I should say um, <clears throat> on this just some uh, basically a note to the plat that as um, for the area that we're that we understand the proposed uses that's understood here is that um, it, it meets those however if another use comes in that that could change you just need a, a note there saying that that additional there may be a plat amendment that would need to occur at that point in time Again, park strip comments on those. That's that. <clears throat> on the utility sheet, so the proposed off-site sewer that runs along UDOT's uh, right-of-way, um, an easement would need to be provided for that. And so, and also uh, for the easement to be there, but also an access so that we can get to it. Whether that access is um, would need to come off of the, the western side or um, put provisions in here that would allow uh, our equipment if we need to go back in there because we do need to go and check those manholes on a regular basis um, but if we find anything that would allow us to get our equipment back into there 15 foot should be adequate to get us to there um, yeah and just just as you're building it make make sure that we can get a truck down it to service it so yeah, because it'd be really bad for if that line were to have any issues and, and back up into those homes. So, um, we already talked about meters. I already talked about the fire hydrants. Um, we do need a water line run in this this road here, just for culinary water. We don't need a pressurized irrigation, but that gives us our second point of connection into the development. So it's a lot, again a lot of homes to be served off of one line located in street one we've talked about the fire hydrants already we'll go into those <clears throat> and then because of the this is a half plus 10 road um, and because of that narrowness uh, that we'll need to do a red curve along there to prevent parking as the people granted there's just one home here but there's potential that these units could start parking out on that, that road. I don't believe that's it on that page. <clears throat> Again, this is just a note that Jason had indicated. You're showing a 10 inch, it's, it's like a 21 inch. It's, and we it's have an contact object. With, the, with the irrigation company, mm -hmm. so we'll, we're working with them to how we line them and make sure we get it. Yep. Um, we will need, um, for that, for, um, for final approval, we'll just need a letter saying that, they, that they're okay with the proposed changes. I'll, I'll express, uh, say thank you for working with us and providing wider asphalt through there. Um, that'll help both fire and public works and uh, associate with that, so thank you. Um, one, just two comments on the the, park, the street parking. Um, now that we've added this road, we probably need to extend that so we're not having potential cars or cars parking in that and limiting the access through there. Again, we have a 
curb radius here that needs to be um, red curb as well. Hey, John, yes. I forgot to mention we need a couple of stop signs on that new road too. Stop signs here? Okay. Yeah, one on each end. Okay. And that's it. Uh, any other comments that we've got? So, any other thoughts or questions? If not, I would look for a motion. I guess my question for you, John, is is there anything engineering wise or or infrastructure wise that that you would not see this uh, th that you would see uh, holding this back from moving forward? At this point, I don't, because most of it, again, is is clean up, um, providing easements and that kind of thing, which is strictly an engineering review on those. So the only other thing that you may would be coordinating with fire. To make Can sure you go to a there. phasing plan? Do you, do you have a phasing plan? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. It's essentially that. So phase one's all the residential. So you're going to need that sewer for phase one, then you're going to need the sewer easement down through UDOT to be able to do phase one. Okay. That that's the only thing I would say is that just recognize that without that easement, you're holding the whole project yeah. up, and so yeah, we'll that's that. something that you need to be working on and, and moving forward that way. Yeah. So that would be as I see it. So, any, any thoughts on motion? <laughs> John, I'll make a motion that we approve the preliminary plan for Silver for Silver Oaks pending engineering red lines. So we recommend approval. Recommend approval. Okay. Got a recommendation? Is there a second? I'll second it. Second by Jason Calloway. Any discussion on the motion? So can I suggest that that we also <coughs> add that that it not go to planning commission until these red lines are addressed? Uh, I think there's there's some things that, uh, you know, while we, we don't want to hold them up here at DRC, I think before they move to planning commission, uh, we we need a little bit more information. Be okay with that? Decision? So moved. Okay. You okay with the yeah. second? Okay. Yeah. Uh, any other comments? Seeing none. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Motion passes. So we'll get these red lines okay. updated. There's a couple in here we'll add to to these, and then we'll get them sent over to you. Okay. Um, we'll we'll start working on those. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Thank you. Thank, Thank you much. <clears throat> Next. Derek Terry, I forgot to do that. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the next item on the agenda is the concept plan for the ZL Goodall Plat A. Do you want to come up, come up to the table, and if you could just state your name for it. Appreciate your patience. There's a lot coming through. So, so. Uh, Mark Bing. Okay. So this is a proposed two lot subdivision um, located on 3rd East and 2nd South. Um, you you live in this on yeah, this right here. Yeah, South right of, yeah. Yep. And so this is, again, a proposed subdivision um, through here. So they're splitting off the southern leg of it here for uh, a buildable lot on there. So this is a, again, a concept plan. So. Our role today is is just to review it, provide any comments or feedback that may need to that may come up from a strictly a staff technical level. So, with that, we'll go around DRC. Brian, you have I any comments? Have Nothing. Okay, Jason. Looks like the utility is pretty straightforward. I don't, you know, I just make sure you check the sewer line out front. Make sure your depths are okay for what you want to build or. You first? I don't have anything. Okay. Jason? I don't have much to say. Just with red line comments, we can go, we'll go through together. Okay. Norm, do you have anything? Um, I would point out that this has a waiver of protest that was filed at the point in time that was, this was subdivided the last time, and so that still applies to here. There's no deferral agreement that's needed. Um, that, that waiver of protest is still 
in place and applies to this as you move forward? So the waiver of protest is basically is prior to deferral agreements, but basically indicating that uh, the improvements for you know curb gutter, sidewalk, additional road asphalt, um, those have been taken care of or, or waived to at the future point in time. So um, that's where he's indicating that. So with that, I'll kind of go through a couple comments on here. Um, you're currently showing a 10 foot PUE along the north property line that can actually be adjusted to a five foot. So um, that'll free up a little bit of property on there. Um, and then just correlating setbacks from what's included in the table here to what will be shown on the plan itself. Um, again, just so we've got it, the records uh, appropriately, just show where the existing utilities are to the existing home there, um, show that they're, that they're existing. And um, then just as a, some options uh, for this to kind of, I guess, help clarify those options that we have is, um, for the crossing. That could be um, open trench installed or it could be um, uh, board or uh, say another term is you send a torpedo through it. Um, that would pull that lateral for the culinary water across the road without having to open cut it, which would save a significant amount when it comes to the bonding and road cuts associated with that. So um, there's just a couple options um, on there. If you did an open cut trench, there'd be uh, bonding associated with the cutting the asphalt, the uh, road base and the structure underneath it, and then an overlay of that. Uh, so there may be some, some cost benefits there. And I believe that is it on this one. So any other thoughts, comments, or anything from the DRC? Just maybe as a quick clarification for everybody, this, this is the start of the subdivision process. So this is a concept plan. There's no action needed from us. Uh, this is going to be on the Planning Commission agenda tonight where a public hearing will, will take place 7 o'clock. And I imagine Mr. Bing will plan to be there. And again, there's no action taken. It's just feedback. Uh, because this is only two lots, this, this does uh, qualify for the streamline process. So uh, after concept plan, uh, it would come back to DRC when they have a preliminary plan ready to go. And then we would make a recommendation. And then Planning Commission could be the uh, land use authority and approve this application. So a little bit quicker process than our, our standard subdivision process. But for purposes of, of, of today, really, both DRC and Planning Commission, it's just feedback given. Uh, to help the applicant and, and their engineer understand anything that can help them to, to put together a, a more comprehensive and, and, and better prepared preliminary plan. Okay. If there's not anything else. Okay. We'll um, probably I say after planning commission tonight, um, any comments or anything from there will be included on these and we'll get sent over to you so we can get preliminary plans going. Okay, great. Okay. And I'll, I'll get on John next time to put you first on the agenda. So you don't I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <that'd be> interesting. <laughs> but now you can see what's coming in. Yeah, Lots so going on, huh? There it is. Thanks, Mark. Thank you. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you. Take care. Okay, the next item on the agenda, on the agenda, that. Have a good one. Is the mark, it's the approval of the mark 14th minutes. I make a motion to approve. Okay. Second. We got a second by Ryan. Any discussion? Okay. All in favor of approving those minutes, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, those minutes are approved. Without anything else, I'd look for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Okay, we are adjourned at 11.14 a.m. Thanks, everybody. I will second that motion. <laughs>